Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to this episode of Sunday Messages. I'm quite excited about today's episode because I am talking all about investment. But I promise you this is not going to be the kind of episode that you think it's going to be. And this is why I'm bringing this topic to you today, as always. Of course, when people are talking about investing, a lot of the time they're referring to money specifically. But for this episode, I want to talk about investment in terms of energy. So I've used this analogy before and I want to bring it to you again. When you think about your energy, and this is going to show up in a lot of different ways, but your energy as a whole, you can consider it to be like your money. So imagine that your energy is your money. And where you invest, where you put that energy, where you direct the energy, is what you're investing in in present time. So when we are talking about investing, if we start to look at more things as investments, then the more intentional you will become with your energy, the more consciousness you're going to end up bringing to the things that you're doing, and every fragment of your energy becomes an investment. And this is one of the things earlier today I did, the preparation call for Apex. And of course, when you're doing the Apex protocol, you experience an expansion of time. So the amount of time that you have at your fingertips is enhanced and amplified because we're doing a fast. And so when all of a sudden you've reclaimed all of this energy that you may have been giving to things that weren't giving you a good return on your investment, all of that money that you've been blowing metaphorically, you get back. So now you're sitting with this energetic currency that you now have the opportunity to redirect in any direction you want it to go. So every thought is an investment. The thoughts that you entertain are investments. The TV shows that you watch are investments. The music that you listen to is an investment. The food that you cook is an investment. The time that you spend outside is an investment. How much time and energy you give to different people and relationships and family connections. All of these are forms of investment. And you have an energetic currency that you are investing into different things every single day. Now, depending on what you want, just to put it lightly, what do you want? That very broad question is going to inform the type of investments energetically that you want to be making for yourself in order to make that dream become a reality. One of the things that I personally feel a lot of people have forgotten is that the most important currency that you have is your energetic currency. It is not your monetary currency or anything else. So when we're thinking about investments, I like broadening this term and I like thinking about it from an energetic perspective because that's actually what's going to give you results. You can spend a lot of money on a lot of different things, but if your energy isn't backing it up, then investments, financial investments, can fall flat a lot of the time. And if you start making this practice an energetic one before you involve anything else into the mix, before you start involving anything regarding the 3D world, you can actually get a lot farther than you than you might realize. And the other thing that this accomplishes is it really places the emphasis on embodiment rather than external moves and just taking action because you're going to cap out on what you can actually do when it comes to taking action. There's only so many things that you can achieve with that. Action is a part of it, but you already know my thoughts on action. I did a whole podcast episode just on that topic alone. The energetic currency that you invest is a shapeshifter. So it can look so many different ways. And of course, this currency turns into things and stuff. But it's not always how you think it will be. 
And the interesting thing, at least for me, is I like investing in things that are actually indirect. So let's say I have a goal for my business or I have things that I want to accomplish in my business. My way of investing in my business right now is actually by investing in my physical body. So taking really good care of myself, getting massage therapy on a regular basis, being really good to myself, investing my time. Because remember, time is a thing. So time is is actually a later stage manifestation of your energetic currency. So right now, I'm in this phase where even though there's a lot of things in my life right now where I'm set up in a really good position to actually hold more clients, to expand, to put on more classes, to create more content. All of that is locked and loaded. But when I'm really in tune with the subtle energetics of what wants to occur next, what will actually take my life and experience and creations to the next level, I've been getting the ping to just invest more of my energetic currency in the direction of my vitality, my well-being, my fitness, my uh, muscular system, even things like my pillows. My pillows have been coming up like I needed to change the type of pillow that I was using and lo and behold my headaches have completely disappeared because I've modified my pillows. Even though I thought the pillow that I was using originally was actually for my neck. So it's interesting how all of these things are super interconnected, where depending on how in tune you are with yourself and what you're really needing or desiring in the moment, where you want to expand is going to shape shift depending on the season of your life, what you're ready for, what you're inspired to, what your soul is pulling you towards. And the beauty of this is that you can make investments on a micro or macro level. So a micro investment, in my perspective, is something like a thought form. So the thoughts that you are entertaining, the thoughts that you're believing, the thoughts that you are feeding yourself, those are micro investments that you're making every single day. Macro investments are something like Yeah, you're making a big purchase or you're committing to do something. Maybe you decide that it's time for you to work with a new practitioner and it's just way more work that you're setting yourself up for. So there's all different ways that investments can show up on micro and macro levels. And when you start really considering the energetic investments that you're making each and every day, they will add up. I promise you that. If you make a whole bunch of micro investments from a mental body standpoint and that's the only thing that you do, you will transform your life inevitably. Or if you make a whole bunch of teeny tiny micro decisions, micro investments that just help your body a little bit more, that will absolutely make a difference in your life. And so one of the things that I'm encouraging here is for you to not discount the micro investments that you're making on a daily basis. The longer you entertain conversations that don't make you feel good, or if you're listening to a friend bitch and moan in a way that is just absolutely draining you, if you make enough of those decisions to stay and engage in those in those seemingly benign interactions, you will reach a boiling point where you've given so much energy, you've invested in that so much that it results in things like resentment or frustration or avoidance, right? So don't underestimate your micro investments. This is one of the biggest blind spots that I think people have is they want to make big moves and big investments because they think that that gets the fastest results. Well, not necessarily. You don't have to wait for a a huge financial investment in order to change your life because you can do it on a micro level first. You can boil it down to the little behaviors, the little thoughts, the little moments, the little decisions that you're making 
And know that that can actually change the trajectory of your entire life if you're being really intentional with it. And it's not something that has to cost. It doesn't have to be financially intensive. Now, don't get me wrong, financial investments that are really expansive and feel really bold and feel good and it's uncharted territory that you've never been into before, those can be really financially activating, energetically activating investments as well. But I would put financial investment into the same category as energetic investment for the most part. The only difference is that people have a lot of baggage around money stuff. And so investing financially can feel different, not because it's energetically different, but because it's emotionally different for people. Another type of investment that has a lot of emotional baggage for a lot of people would be a time investment. If I said, yes, you can get to where you want to be, but it's going to take an hour of your day consistently each and every day, even though that's one twenty-fourth of your day in order to get a result, that time investment can come with a lot of emotional baggage, not because a time shortage exists. Time shortage is perceptual, it's not real, it's not an actual thing, it's your relationship to time. So these big investments or perceptual big investments, when we're talking about energetics, there is no such thing as an investment that's too big. Investments that are too big are too big for the human aspect of you. So if you were to ask God, is this investment too big? God is always going to answer with no. But the part of you that contracts your nervous system getting all lit up and frazzled, your doubt that creeps in, the habitual thoughts that you've been thinking for a long time, those are the human limitations that you're trying to dance with when it comes to the investments that you're making. This is why... I'm a big fan of micro investments, investments in thoughts, investments in feelings, investments that are not necessarily attached to a really in intense or dense action, and indirect investments. Because if you're making indirect investments that don't necessarily have a direct correlation to the result that you're wanting to get, because there's no way to quantify the relationship between the two. Just as an example, if one of the things that I'm guided to do is get massage therapy more frequently, so right now I get a massage every month, if I were to bump that up to every week, let's say, well, I can't tell you what that's going to do for the other areas of my life that I'm looking to improve at this moment in time. So what what that does is it allows me to relax around the outcomes of those areas, right? Because I can want the outcome, but I'm not putting pressure on this particular investment or this particular action in order to deliver the results. I just trust that my energetic investment is doing the heavy lifting, that for whatever reason, there's a relationship between me supporting my body physically more often, me putting more money, more time, more energy into taking care of my vessel, that investment, for whatever reason, is going to upgrade my life. So my desires, and I guess we could say my goals, my intentions, are being held lighter Right, I don't have a death grip around what I want and what I'm doing in order to get there because there is no distinct correlation. I can't say that, oh, I'm going to go get a massage and then poof, I'm going to get a new client. That's not how that works. The beauty of that indirect investment is that you get to want what you want Know that everything is of service. All of your investments are serving you without putting pressure on the investment. Depending where you are mentally and emotionally is going to determine how much pressure you're putting on the investment, right? So if you're in more of a relaxed space and you can really hear yourself 
and you're dwelling in this energy of knowing and trusting and creating, well then more than likely your investments aren't going to be put in a pressure cooker. You're not going to be demanding the investment to give you a particular result because you understand that the investment is energetic. The results are about your alignment. That's the distinction that I really want to make for you is that investing is something that you're doing every day all the time. Now, whether or not you're conscious of that is a completely different discussion, but the bottom line is you have energy and what you're giving that energy to is what you're investing in. So whether or not that energetic investment is taking you in the direction that you want to go or it's keeping you in the same position, that's something that only you know for sure. Now, if you are putting your investments in a pressure cooker, if you are like, let's say you invest in your business and then all of a sudden you have a lot of pressure on the results that your business is getting, or if you're going to a new therapist and then you want to have a certain emotional result or improvement in some external circumstance in your life, a lot of the time the pressure on the investment comes from being in a misaligned state to begin with. Because if you're making an investment from fear or desperation, well, that just means that you're dwelling in an emotional state that really does not feel good. And then that is bleeding over into your investments. So to be clear, that's not necessarily wrong Because I personally have made investments from that state. For example, I was in a really desperate position with my mental health and I had to get a new therapist. And because of what I was dealing with, I needed to go to someone who really knew what they were doing. And at the time, this was a really massive investment for me, particularly because it was early on in my business. However, even though I was coming from a space of desperation because I was dealing with essentially a mental health crisis, like I was I was almost at the point where my family wanted to hospitalize me because it was so bad, because it was so extreme. Making that investment in that position wasn't wrong because little did I know that therapist led to a whole bunch of other things. And because my quality of life improved by taking those initial steps, yes, from a misaligned state, that doesn't mean the investments were bad. So I just wanted to clear that up. There are some times where we're dealing with things in our life where we do desperately need to make a certain investment, even if it's scary, even if the time and the energy and the money and blah, blah, blah is something that's a really significant edge for us. That doesn't mean it's bad or wrong or going to produce some type of dissatisfying results. That's not true at all. The reason why I'm bringing this up is so that you know for yourself. Ideally, before you start making any type of investment, You want to be in alignment. That's the ideal situation is that you can feel the right next steps for you. You can feel your desires and you're being guided in a way that really feels good to you. And the investments just feel natural and expansive and right. There's just a deep resonance with the investments that you're making. Whether it be something that pushes you or it just be the right next move or whatever. And, 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 it is also possible that there will come different seasons or experiences where you you are requiring assistance with something in your life promptly. That is like the gentlest way that I can say there's an emergency, (laughs) okay, where you do need to make an investment before you have your energy 100% behind it, and that's okay. We don't want you chronically in that state because then that's pointing to a deeper issue. That's pointing to some dysregulation on your part. That's pointing to some emotional work that wants to happen, right? But it doesn't mean that you can't have different types of experiences with your investments. I would also say there are times when I experience this on a very 
small scale on a very micro level where in the moment I'll notice something going on with myself and I'll immediately know what I need. Like I need to invest my time here or I need to go meditate right the fuck now. I need to get out of this space. I need to go do something else with my energy in order to come back to center because that's the best investment I can make in that moment. So if you start taking this perspective of more things are investments, investments are energetic, investments can show up in many different ways and take many different forms, and you are investing in things all day, every day, your awareness of what is coming next in your life is going to become much more visible to you. Because the perspective of these are the investments that I'm making every day, well, now all of a sudden you understand and recognize the energetic significance of what you're doing. Whether it be micro or macro, there is energetic power behind what you're doing. So this is why looking at your thoughts as investments is a fantastic way to start. First of all, it's free. It's free. Like anyone can examine their thoughts and look at, is this the type of thought that is investing because there's energetic currency in the thought? Am I investing that in the direction that I want it to go? And so you can do this on any level, but when you start taking this approach, it's going to illuminate a lot of what you're building in your life. One more piece that I want to bring to the table in this conversation about investments is your investments are not risks. So you're investing time and energy or money into something is never going to randomly give you a mixed bag result. Never. That is never going to happen. Your investments are crystal clear because what is backing the investment? Your intention. So if you agree that you are a creator in this lifetime, that you are co-creating with God, you're co-creating with the universe. If you accept that initial premise, then it would also be logical that your alignment, desires, and intention are going to deliver the results. This also includes failures. So I'm sure some of you are like, but Sydney, if that's how it works, then how do people fail? Well, if you think about the energetics behind it, one, if you were expecting to fail or expecting a mixed bag, if you had your intention all over the place, well, then that proves my point. However, if you have conviction about an outcome that you actually want and you have a strong expectation that something is going to unfold in your life and you're experiencing what you would call a failure, that does not negate the energy that you originally put in. So the energetic investment that's occurring is still occurring. Your investment energetically in your future, in the desired outcome still happened, even if the short-term result did not pan out the way you initially wanted it to. So this isn't to say that failure means something has gone wrong. Failure is either pointing to an underlying expectation that you have, incongruent energetics, or you're just early in the process. Those are the only things that failure is really pointing to. It doesn't mean that you've wasted something. So let the energetics work for you. So if I invested $20,000 in something that I did not take action on or take full advantage of the investment on a very surface level, I would still consider the energetics to be working in my favor because I did flow energy in that direction financially. The energetic flow occurred. So that energetic flow occurred no matter what. This is why I don't believe in waste. Now, this is not to say go, you know, blow money all over the place and go waste your time and and be intentionally wasteful. No, no, no. This is just about shifting the idea that waste is possible for you and instead look at all of these things as 
your intention is actually dominant. Your de- your desires are dominant and the investments that are lined up as a result are just a natural extension of the desire that you have. Every single step along the way, whether you perceive it as waste or not, although I highly recommend not perceiving waste any longer, just seeing it as energetic circulation that's occurring, this will help you continue to move in the direction that you want to go without getting trapped in perceived waste. Because perceived waste can come along with a lot of emotional baggage. Like then you start dipping into all of the emotions that really don't serve you. So if you can shift yourself out of there, then this whole fear of failure thing can really soften up. I'm not suggesting that it's necessarily going to disappear, but it can get softer and softer and softer the more that you get away from the judgment and fear and shame of waste. All right, friends, that is what I have for you on investments today. I hope this has been helpful. Of course, there's a million and one things that I could say more. I'm sure many of you would appreciate a three-hour conversation on this topic, but that's what I have for you today. And I also want to remind you to get on my newsletter, Good Things Are Coming. Good Things Are Coming. You hear from me every single Sunday. I send you a little reading. I send you some magic. It just, it just flies into your inbox every single Sunday morning. And so if you would like to receive that from me, go ahead, sign up for my newsletter. The link will be in the description box below. And I also want to let you know if you did not get a chance to watch Fabric of the Universe, it is now available on my website. So you can check that out as well. I will make sure to include the link in the description box, show notes, wherever you are listening to this. And that is a wrap. Thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you found this helpful, if you know someone who needs to hear this, please send it to them. And if you feel inspired to leave me a review on Spotify or Apple, I would greatly appreciate it. I love you so, so, so much. Have a fantastic week, and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.